like um, like as if we were, uh, you know, from a third world, really. Um, it was like the real tradesman's entrance um, trip that we got. They, they were really unpleasant to us. I mean, it's not a New York trait, uh, I, I know, but um, when you do get that kind of attitude, it puts you off wanting to go to the venue again. Um, so that that's that one. Um, from Pat in Kent, UK. What was the recording process during your spells with Tull? Well, it was always pretty much the same thing, really. Um, Ian uh, used to dictate most of the stuff, and most of the time there weren't any actual complete songs. He was quite amazing in the studio. He'd turn up with little riffs or ideas or chord sequences, and we'd all kind of chip in ideas. Um, we'd all chip in, but, but mainly it was, it was him who, from out of nowhere, he'd conjure up bits and pieces and lines of music um, there and then in the studio. He, he was very creative and very inventive in that way. If there were demos, how far were they from being complete p pieces? Were they simply Ian and guitar, piano, or th were they more complete than that? Never heard any demos of Ian's, actually. It was all, he'd always just pick up the guitar and play or rough things out on keyboards. I, I preferred it when, when he would write songs on the guitar. He did go through a phase, certainly in Under Wraps, where he'd, he'd kind of adopted all the new technology that was coming out in terms of drum machines and uh, keyboards and, and sampling and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but very rarely was there a complete song. I think Budapest was one of them. And there was also um, one called Part of the Machine, which, which was a complete song. Um, but a lot of the other times, the tracks, we'd record all the backing tracks and overdubs and do loads of stuff before, any, before he'd written any lyrics. So it was very difficult to know how the song was going to turn out. You just had to have complete faith in his ability to come up with something which 99% of the time was 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 fine and he would but sometimes tracks would never be used because he hadn't come up with any lyrics or the lyrics he'd come up with were inappropriate to the the track and that that was a, sh a shame really uh, how much input did you have into crafting new pieces and did Ian take your suggestions on board positively um, yeah, I'm sure he was uh, he was up for anything that people suggested if if it w if it fitted in with how he saw the song going. But um, myself personally, I I didn't really have that much input in, in into it. I, I remember in the early days, I can remember, I think playing the mandolin and doing some bits of harmonies and stuff like that on um, on some instrumentals and and getting the bazooki in on on broadsword and the beast was may have helped a bit but Ian you know he'd, he'd let us do what we wanted really most of the bass lines that I would come up with he, he would kind of approve but there were times when he would actually write bass parts for me like uh, and very clever bass parts and uh, as I mentioned earlier he's very creative and very innovative in the studio and ideas just came from him the song Jack Frost and the Hooded Crow, for example, um, which is in 5-4 time, and when you first hear it, when he, f when he first kind of played it to us um, in its kind of sketchy format without there being any lyrics and stuff, uh, I, j <laughs> I just went, oh, cripes, what can I play on this? And he kind of invented a really fantastic moving ba bass part, uh, which I learned. So... Um, Credit where it's due is um, he's he's a, a very creative man in the studio and and lots of you know lots of good ideas. How comfortable were you on s with the stage antics of the live shows, for instance, Dave, having your ass severely thrashed night after night on stage during Hunter Hunting Girl Ever Get Tires and no, <laughs> no, not at all, though, Pat. It was um. It was always great fun. I mean, it's just, you know, Toll had its kind of humorous sides. And um, 
the stage antics were were, were great fun. I mean, we, it was it was all part of the show, and we we loved most of the things that we, we came up with. I mean, the the white coats and the miners' lamps and all that stuff for um for for some of the numbers were fantastic, and uh, and the the wooden guitars, you know, for um. For for another thing with the white coats and and the uh, and the miners helmets was fantastic too. No, I I I loved all that side of it, and I think it's something that's kind of lacking in the current soul lineup. They don't they seem to have lost an awful lot of their sense of humour. Um, sorry about the background dishwasher noise, Ula, but I think I've answered all the questions now. <laughs> now all I've got to do is try and send this to you. So uh, best wishes to Toll fans the world over and uh, hope we'll see you at, at Cropredy one August or in Brittany at our house. Cheers, Peggy.